You are joining me for this video where we are going to examine how to derive the volume of a toroid using integral calculus. The single best approach here is using cylindrical shells, a modified cylindrical shell approach. Keep in mind the volume formula is this, 2 times pi square times radius square and that r. Let's talk about those two r's. If you have a circle which is drawn a certain distance away from this origin, their line of rotation being your y-axis, the circle has a certain inherent radius and we'll call that r. That's the inherent radius or the inner radius of that circle. It's also called the minor radius. But from your line of rotation and the origin, looking across, you're looking at a major radius. Well, those are your two r's. You know when you rotate this around the circular depiction with its area that it's shaded, you're going to develop a donut-like or a ring-like structure and that structure or a three-dimensional solid is called your toroid. You can also call it a torus. Either way, the designation is fine. The best way as I alluded to was the cylindrical shell technique. How do we go about approaching this? Look at the equation over here, x minus h whole square plus y square is equal to r square. Why is that the equation? Because you know based on this depiction h comma zero is the center of this circle. Keep in mind this very important point. h over here represents the x value of the center but it also represents the distance of the center of this circle from the origin. A certain distance and you know that you're h units away from the origin along the x-axis and because of that you can also say very comfortably this major radius is equal to h. Think about it. This h comma zero represents your h units away from the origin, but that also represents the major radius. Hence, you can view this as this r comma zero. In the capital r comma zero. This h comma zero would be synonymous. Now, what happens is this: you're looking at x minus that r square plus y square is equal to r square. That becomes your equation the equation that will carry you through when you're looking at the cylindrical shell you're looking here with the y-axis rotation but unlike the basic integral procedure with regards to volume with cylindrical shells things flip around everything is with regards to dx when you have a vertical line of rotation hence your equation must be presented in the y equals format and you will r square minus x minus capital r whole square that's your equation but when you look at that equation you know you're looking at something like this a half of a circle because a radical eliminates the lower part. We must incorporate it in our integral a times 2 to recapture this lower part. And that recapturing this lower part will make sense momentarily when I'm talking about the cylindrical shell aspects. What are the cylindrical shell aspects? There's a circumference, there's a height of a Riemann rectangle, and there's a thickness. All of that will come into play. What's the circumference? 2 pi r. But what's the radius we're looking at over here? You're looking here across in the x dimension, but this x can be modified to be synonymous with this right here, the capital R I've been talking about. So the circumference becomes 2 pi and then that. What's the height? Well, the height would technically be from right here over here with regards to a Riemann rectangle, but by means of this square root, we're only looking at a half of a height, hence this times 2 makes sense. The height will be from your x-axis up to that top part of your curve but times by 2 to capture the entire length and that height will be this 2 times that r square minus x minus r whole square what's the thickness well it's your dx and now we have everything in play and at work to take this through volume with respect to x for this torus will be equal to this 2 pi r being pushed outside. Well, I have this 2 pi r pushed outside, but I also have this 2 coming from this point right here representing the height. Keep in mind, one of these 2's is coming from your circumference, the other 2 is coming from your height, which was also to recapture the lost portion from your radical. Anyhow, if you want to combine these 2's right now, you can, and then this can become a 4 pi r, but here the r is a capital R, as you can see right over here, this designation r and as well the designation I talked about. Now we have this function here, r square minus x minus r square. Keep in mind I'm talking about r and r but they're two different r's. Visually you see the difference but verbally I'm not differentiating them. Otherwise I'd be saying lowercase r capital R. What are my limits? Well you know the limits are going to be from right over here in terms of your x to right here in terms of your x lower limit and upper limit but what are these? Look at your representation. This is my line of rotation. I am to this center a large value major radius away but there's an inner radius r 
Therefore, from here to here, I must be R minus R. But from right here to the tip, I must be R plus R. All of this should make sense, and it does. So my lower limit is R minus R. My upper limit is R plus R. Again, I'm not verbalizing the differences in the R's, but you see that to be the case. This is my entire integral, which will give me the volume of the toroid to be that. How can we do that? Now, this is where we have come up to, and we have to do a trigonometric substitution technique to deal with this. What will our substitution be? It will be a is equal to r, but then we have to do a good substitution. r plus r sine theta dx is equal to r cosine theta d theta, and then theta 1 and theta 2. Everything with respect to this equation right here with these limits coming in. r minus r coming in place of that, the capital R's will always cancel. You'll have a minus pi over 2 because you'll be looking at the arc sine of minus 1. With this upper limit, you'll have a positive pi over 2 because you'll be looking at the inverse sine or the arc sine of 1, which is a pi over 2. You'll bring all of these substitutions into play over here. And what do we get? We'll have a 4 pi and then this r, a minus pi over 2, positive pi over 2. And then let's bring the substitutions in r square minus x is represented by that capital R plus r sine theta but there's a minus r and then there's a whole square and then dx is going to be r cosine theta d theta let's work entirely right over here and see what happens this minus r and this r will cancel out but you've seen all of this item right here in the box it's going to all become r square cosine square theta within a radical which is an r cosine theta this will multiply with all of that and you get a r square cosine square theta. You've seen this many times when you've been doing integrals involving unit circles. This is the end result of everything which you are seeing here underlined. And let's bring that into play right over here. We have r square cosine square theta d theta. Recognize the fact that this can come out so you'll have a 4 pi r r square and recognize that you have a power reducing identity or a half angle formula which can come into play and we will do that. Cosine squared theta is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. You'll separate everything across that positive sign. I'll do that and your integrals will become 4 pi. I'm putting this r square and then I'm putting that r and then I have a over 2 minus pi over 2 pi over 2 d theta. That's this part coming from right here. Now I'm separating everything across that part and it will be a plus. All of this will repeat again 4 pi r square r over 2 minus pi over 2 positive pi over 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. Now look, all of this part right here which I'm underlining will by means of the antiderivative of cosine and the u substitution involving 2 theta changing these limits to a minus pi and a pi and the antiderivative which will come out is sine u. All of this will zero out and you can calculate that for yourself. Your limits will change to minus pi pi antiderivative sine u sine of pi minus pi are all zeros. It zeroes everything out. The only thing which remains is this part right here. 4 pi r square r divided by 2 is basically just a 2 pi r square r with an antiderivative here being theta. You're looking at it from pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2 is a pi that pi will multiply with this and you'll have a 2 pi square r square r and that's your volume of this when this region of space here will rotate or revolve around the y-axis giving you that donut like three-dimensional solid again remember from all of here in terms of the antiderivative and the upper lower limits you're getting a pi that pi multiplies in here and you get your 2 pi square r square r the modification here you have to keep in mind is this when we're doing the cylindrical shell technique the circumference 2 pi x is a 2 pi r for the reasons I told you how the distance here h being synonymous with the r the major radius and the major radius also in a way serves as a centroid value over here because if you look at this circle over here the circle has a center that center is the centroid the centroid of this circle would be h comma zero but if I'm telling you r capital R is synonymous with h then you can say r comma zero is equal to h comma zero you can bring this value in here in terms of the radius for the circumference component of the cylindrical shell 2 pi r the height two times that radical the only reason we bring the two over here is to capture the lower part of the Riemann rectangle the radical only looks at this top part you have to bring the times two to capture the lower part these twos one from the circumference one from the radical compensation brings the four which i showed you right over here 
Thank you for watching. Have a good day.